day, grade 10 students. This is Sir Brian Remilio, and today we will talk about evidences of plate movement. We are now at the eighth week of the first quarter. For this lesson, we will refer to your module number five entitled Evidences of Plate Movement. At the end of this lesson, you are expected to enumerate the lines of evidence that support the plate movement. Before we start the lesson, let us have some review first. In your previous module, you have learned about geologic processes and landforms along plate boundaries. Let us test your knowledge about that. Question number one. What is the process that is illustrated in the picture? The correct answer is subduction process. Question number two. During subduction, oceanic crust bends and moves downwards. What is the property of the oceanic crust that causes it to do so? Answer. Oceanic crust is denser than continental crust. Therefore, oceanic crust move downward. Question number three. What happens to the oceanic crust as it moves downward? Answer, the oceanic crust melts and turns into magma. Question number four. What type of plate boundary is illustrated in the picture? The correct answer is divergent plate boundary. And for question number five, what geologic landform is located if a divergent plate boundary is present in an oceanic plate? The correct answer is mid-ocean ridge. Now that we have the review out of the way, why don't we look at this image? What do you see in the picture? You're right, the picture shows the continent South America and Africa. Now look at the image once more. Observe how they look. You might have noticed that they almost look like jigsaw puzzle pieces that fit together. Especially the eastern coastline of South America and the western coastline of Africa. They look like they belong together. This led for a one scientist to believe that these continents and all of the other continents were once connected. Let me introduce to you Alfred Wegener. He proposed the idea that the continents were once connected and that they drifted apart into their current locations. Wegener called it Continental Drift Theory. According to the Continental Drift Theory, all the continents were once part of a large landmass called Pangaea, which drifted away from each other. The word Pangaea came from the Greek word meaning all earth. Wegener referred to it as the supercontinent that existed 250 million years ago. Now, people didn't buy this idea at first, so Wegener came up with evidences to prove his theory. Now we're going to take a look at the pieces of evidence that Wegener put together to prove that the continents had drifted. The first one we have already discussed a while back, the jigsaw puzzle feet of the continents. According to Wegener, the edge of one continent surprisingly matches the edge of another. South America and Africa fit together. Surprisingly, India, Antarctica, and Australia match one another. And lastly, Eurasia and North America complete the whole continental puzzle in the north. Another evidence Wagner put up are fossils. Fossils are preserved remains of organisms from the remote past. In particular, he used the Mesosaurus fossil. Mesosaurus are reptiles 
that live in shallow fresh waters. What's interesting though is that the Mesosaurus fossils are located in both the continents of South America and Africa. Now, it is unlikely that the Mesosaurus can fly across the Atlantic Ocean. Although they can swim, the distance is so great and that they cannot survive in salt water. So how come that the fossils are found in both of the continents? What Wigner suggests is that while the Mesosaurus are free to roam around the land, Africa and South America were connected. Then after the Mesosaurus has died, the continents got separated. Interestingly, there are other organisms that have the same cases like the Lystrosaurus, Cynonathus, and Glossopteris. The location of their fossils suggests that the continents were once together. In fact, if you reassemble the continents and map out the locations of these fossils, they line up perfectly. This illustration shows how the fossils line up if the continents were put together. The fossils found in rocks support the continental drift, but the rocks themselves also provide evidence of the continental drift. So we have evidence from rocks. If we look at the mountain ranges of the northeastern United States and the mountain ranges in the northern Europe, they match up perfectly. What I mean by match up perfectly is that they are made up of the same type of rock and same age of rock. Geologically, it is more likely that these rocks and mountain ranges were once connected as if they were once a long mountain range. Finally, the last evidence Wagner used are coal deposits and past climate data. Coal beds are formed from compaction and decomposition of swamp plants that lived million years ago. These were discovered in continents that has tropical climate like South America, Africa, Indian subcontinent, and the Southeast Asia. Interestingly, coal beds are also found in Antarctica. Now, as we all know, Antarctica has a very cold climate, and its current location could not sustain substantial amount of life. If there is coal in it, Antarctica must have been positioned in a part of the Earth where it can support large quantities of life. Of life. This led to the idea that Antarctica once experienced a tropical climate. Thus, it might have been closer before on the equator. So again, these are the evidences that support Wagner's theory of continental drift. Despite these evidences presented by Wagner, his idea that the continents were once joined together was not accepted by the scientific community until 1960s. He wasn't able to explain how drifting took place. During the 1960s, with the help of modern technique and gadgets, scientists found out that the ocean floor is the site of drifting. This supports Wigner's continental drift theory. It is called the seafloor spreading theory. The seafloor spreading theory is proposed by Harry Hess and Robert Dietz. It is a theory which states that new ocean crust is being created at mid-ocean ridges and destroyed at the deep sea trenches. So as you have learned in the previous module, mid-ocean ridge is an area in the ocean where the new ocean floor is formed when lava erupts through the crack in the Earth's crust. It is formed between divergent plate boundaries. So as the plate move away from each other, lava seeps into the crack between the plates. The lava solidifies, creating a new seafloor. Now look at your module, open it on page 15, and let us try to answer activity 2, where it all begins. In this activity, you are going to find out the findings that support the seafloor spreading theory. Now pause this video, answer the questions in the activity, and come back once you are done. Okay then, now that you are done, let us try to answer the questions in the activity. For question number one, what type of plate movement or boundary is happening 
in the Mid-Atlantic Ridge? The correct answer is Divergent Plate Boundary. Next question, what molten material will come out of the ridge? The correct answer is Lava. As the plates separate, lava will come out of the crack from the mantle. The lava will solidify, thus becoming the new seafloor. Question number three. What can you say about the ages of the oceanic rocks near the Mid-Atlantic Ridge? The age of rocks near the Mid-Atlantic Ridge is relatively younger as compared to the rocks away from the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Question number four. What can you say about the ages of the oceanic rocks far from the Mid-Atlantic Ridge? The age of rocks far from the Mid-Atlantic Ridge is relatively older. Question number five. What can you say about the thickness of the sediments near the ridge? The correct answer is thinner. It is because the age of the rocks are relatively young or new. Question number six. What can you say about the density of rocks near the ridge? The correct answer is less dense. The density is lesser because there is less sediment built up near the ridge. Question number seven. What can you say about the thickness of the sediments from the ridge? The correct answer is thicker. And finally, for question number eight, what can you say about the density of rocks far from the ridge? The correct answer is denser. So in summary, here are the findings that support the seafloor spreading theory. First, rocks are younger at the mid-ocean ridge. Rocks far from the mid-ocean ridge are older. Sediments are thinner at the ridge. And finally, rocks at the ocean floor are younger than those at the continents. Now that you have learned about the evidences of plate movement, you are now ready to answer assessment on page 23 in your module. Use the attached answer sheet for your answers. I hope that this lesson helped you a lot in understanding plate movement and the evidences that support the theory. Until next time, this is Sir Brian saying thank you and goodbye.